Number 13 then from the 2018 SQA Higher Maths Paper 1. Seven mark question in three parts here, but really just the two parts. As soon as you see that triangle with two of the sides given, you know what's going to happen. You're going to find the third side, that'll let you find sines and cosines, and you can put them into the formulas at the front. And that's indeed what it says. So it gives you this right angle triangle, it also tells you the sign. That's to stop them having to give you a mark, presumably for that, because that'd be the first thing you'd work out. You'd say, oh, the sign's the opposite side. Maybe that even gives you a clue if you were a bit confused as to which was sine and which was cosine. Since if that's the sign, then the unknown one would have been the cosine. Anyway, what does it say? Find for three marks the exact value of sine 2x. You look up the front. So you've got sine 2x is 2 sine x cos x. Now that means I do indeed need cos x. So we go to the triangle. I need to find this third side. This third side here, if I just put the working down here, would be the square root of this squared Take away that squared. The square of root 11 reconstitutes the 11 minus, because this is a shorter side, and that has to be the biggest answer, square of 2 is 4. So that means this side is root 7. There's no mark for that. You don't get a mark until you say, well, that means the other bit of information I need is the cosine is the adjacent side, which is root 7 over root 11. Now you get a mark for dealing with a triangle. But you immediately get a mark, another mark for just popping them into this formula, which you found at the front. Sine x was 2 over root 11. Cos x was root 7 over root 11. That's a mark. Now you just multiply it out, multiply the numerators. 2 times 2 is 4 times root 7 is 4 root 7. Root 11 times root 11 goes back to 11, and that's it. Now part two, find the cos of 2x. You look at the front and you're sort of spoilt for choice. But you can use whichever one takes your fancy. You can use cos squared x minus sine squared x. You can use the 2 cos squared x minus 1, or you can use the 1 minus 2 sine squared x, because they're all the same as each other, because sine squared and cos squared makes 1. So, if you chose this one, it's just a case of feeding the figures. You get the formula at the front. You can either show that or just go straight in with the squares. It's only one mark for this. Maybe I'll just go straight in with the squares. So cos squared will be 7 over 11. And sine squared will be 4 over 11. So that gives you 3 over 11 for that single solitary mark. You could show the intermediate working if you wanted. Bracket root 7 over root 11 all squared. And these two are the same. 2 times 7 over 11 minus 1. That's 14 elevenths minus 11 elevenths, which is 3 elevenths, and same with this. 1 minus 2 times 4 over 11. That's 11 elevenths minus 8 elevenths, which of course is 3 elevenths. They're all the same. Part B, by expressing sine 3x as sine 2x plus x, find the exact value of sine 3x. Well, it didn't give you a clue. It didn't need to give you a clue. It should really have been up to you to realise, how can I get a 3x? And you think, well, I can make it a 2x plus an x. And then you look up the front, because there's a formula that expands the sine of an angle plus an angle. So you look it up, and you get sine 2x cos x plus, remember the plus minus business at the front, if it says plus minus on one side and plus minus on the other side, it means the plus goes with the plus and the minus goes with the minus. Plus cos 2x sine x. You get a mark for doing that. All you did was look up the front. That seems a little bit generous, doesn't it? And you get another mark just for doing this, because after all, in the first part, you've got all the numbers to put into it. You worked out sine 2x, 4 root 7 upon 11. You had cos x 
root 7 over root 11. You had cos 2x. You had them all. And it even told you that first one. Not that it needed to. Now, doing that gets a mark. Now, let's just add that lot up. Common denominator. They're both over 11 root 11. So 4 times root 7 times root 7 is 7. 4 7s are 28. 3 2s are 6. So you've got 34 over 11 root 11. And that's the final mark. But you might wonder, should I really rationalise the denominator or not? Because you have got that situation where if you're writing down sine 45, for instance, you would just write it as 1 upon root 2. And that's its exact value. So that should do. However, if it annoyed you at all, you could always just multiply the top and the bottom by root 11. So the numerator becomes 34 root 11. And root 11 times root 11 would be 11. And 11 11s are 1, 2, 1. You can always write that. But you wouldn't get any extra marks in this case.